Okay, so let's just zoom in to our grayscale section here, and I'm going to expand this frame because we're going to start creating uh, another node network here. So let's start by taking our wood knots and just creating an instance of that here in the main wood planks graph. And as we've been discussing, we have our knots here and we have our mask. So what I'd like to do is use this mask uh, to warp uh, this wood pattern here that we have, which is our cracks pattern. Now in a previous video, um, I've used this directional warp here to offset this crack pattern based on this intensity map. Now, looking at this, I, I don't really feel like this is giving me a very good result. And one of the main issues with this that I'm having is that there's not enough luminance variation here. And it's, well, there is luminance variation, but it's pretty uniform. Uh, also, here we have kind of this uh, horizontal gradient on every one of these planks. Now, it is, like I said, varied, you know, being rotated in different directions, but we basically have this light to dark. And this is, I think, stretching the effect more than it is offsetting it. So I want to fix this before I move any further. So let's jump back over here to this planks, and it's going to be a pretty easy fix. Uh, and actually what I'm going to do is just create a new output for this. So uh, let's just uh, create a new output here. Uh, I'm going to leave usage blank uh, for the identifier. I'm just going to call it uh, luminance underscore variation. And here I'll just copy this and paste this in for the name. Uh, and then just, you know, make it a little bit uh, more user friendly here by getting rid of that underscore. Next, I want to come back over here to this tile generator. And uh, I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm just going to copy and uh, paste it here. So here we have this tile generator. And what I want to do is get rid of this horizontal gradient. And that's, uh, that's actually being created from this, this uh, shape that I'm using as a pattern input. So what I can do is just come over to the pattern type and just simply switch this here to square. So now we, we get rid of that horizontal gradient. Uh, then I'm going to just scroll down uh, here towards the bottom, I think it is. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Up here towards the kind of the middle where we have this luminance variation and luminance by number. So I'm just going to enable luminance by number. So now we're getting more of a uniform per plank value, but it's varied across all these different planks. And again, I can keep messing here with this variation and contrast, uh, but I'm not really going to use those values. What I'm going to do is just create a new levels node. And so then I'll come over to my output black and white and just kind of lift the black here and then just kind of lower the output white. So this is going to give me uh, the range, the luminance range that I really want to work with. And then I'll plug this here into this output. Organizational purposes, I'm just going to move this output here towards the end. All right, so uh, let's save that and let's jump back over to wood planks. So we'll zoom in now and you can see that here are my planks, I have my luminance variation output. And that is what I'm going to use uh, here in this the input of this directional warp. So let's take this uh, last output and make this connection here. And again, just to clean things up, hold down Shift Alt. And I'm just going to grab this point and just move it up here and uh, just kind of reorganize this connection line just so it's a little cleaner to work with. Okay, so now we can see that uh, we're using uh, this new luminance variation output here into this directional warp. All right, so now that we have this in place, and it looks like I, I messed this up here where I, I placed in the wrong input. So uh, just to, to change this, I'm going to hold down the control key, left click on this, and plug it into the intensity input. Then I'm going to grab the cracks and put and replace this as the actual input. So that will, will get everything correct. And unfortunately, I lost uh, my connection, uh, my line here. So let's just redo that again real quick. So we'll just drag these uh, points around just to kind of reorganize this connection line. OK, there we go. So now, now we're ready to, to um, adjust our intensity value here. So just so I can really see what I'm doing, I'm going to uh, just double click this blend where it's being multiplied in. And then I'll come back where this cracks uh, is being multiplied into um, in this blend node here. And so now I'll come in and just start to adjust the intensity. And as I start to change this intensity here, let's do something more like uh, make like a 90. Let's change it to 90. And I, as I move this, you can see that now it's giving more of the effect that I wanted to begin with, where it's it's offsetting instead of kind of stretching. And so this is going to fix that pattern and, and give me the result that I really need here. 
All right, so let's also just take our material output that we have and right click and drag and drop that into the 3D view so we can make sure that we're visualizing this here as we work. Okay, perfect. So now we can get into the process of starting to uh, integrate our wood knots here into uh, the main graph. Okay, so the first step is I want to take this mask and I want to use this uh, to warp these lines that I have. So uh, just to kind of show you what we can do with this here, if we were to just grab a warp node, and so we're going to take the mask, um, well, actually here, let's take this cracks that we have as the input, and we're going to use this mask as the gradient input, and here I'll adjust the intensity. You can see what this is doing is it's just warping these lines and giving, giving me these nice kind of curve shapes around where these knots are going to be. Uh, and this really starts to give us this uh, nice effect of this looking like kind of wood grain here. And so um, we're going to use this same type of warping effect. Now what we want to do though is make sure that uh, we uh, offset uh, these wood knots just as we've been doing here with this directional warp in our crack lines. So what I'm going to do here is grab this directional warp here and I'm going to copy and paste it. So we have a copy of it here. Uh, and then here for the input, we're just going to place our mask here into the input. And so when we look at this uh, here, it's kind of breaking up these wood knots. Now, some of them here look like they're continuing across the plank. So let's just start to rotate and change this a bit till we, until we get uh, more of a kind of broken up look here. So I'm just going to make some adjustments here just to get this uh, kind of to play out like I want it to. And so maybe I'll just go with something like this. So, so I think this will work for me. All right, so now I have uh, my mask has been uh, offset using that luminance variation map that we created. So we have that. And then what we're going to do is use this to feed here into the gradient input for our warp. So now let's take a look at the result of our warp. And so this is uh, looks a bit more natural and varied because these knots are not uh, kind of continuing uh, across uh, different planks and such. So this is going to, again, like I said, give us the kind of result that we want. So here's kind of our first stage uh, of this effect. So here, let's just move these nodes over just to make a, a little bit more room here. OK. so. The kind of the next stage is that uh, here where I have uh, kind of these uh, curved areas, right in the center piece, I'd like to uh, get rid of this kind of real distorted kind of swirling effect. So I'd like to just make this white here and kind of just retain these outside curved uh, crack lines here. So to do that, we are going to uh, use a blend node here. And I'm going to take this directional warp in the foreground and use my warp here in the background. And then for the blending mode, I'm just going to set it to add. And so it starts to have the effect of, of kind of erasing or overriding some of that kind of middle area. But what I'm going to need to do is adjust the values that I have in these kind of in this grayscale um, kind of circular shape. So with this line selected here, I'm going to just add a levels into this. Uh, let's double click our blend and then go back to our levels and just start to make an adjustment here. All right, so here you can see that I'm um, just kind of making this uh, kind of histogram change just to get kind of that center piece of this wood knot just to be completely white, as you see here. And so now we really start to get the, the, the kind of look and feel of this kind of wood shape and this kind of knot shape that we're trying to create uh, as these crack lines kind of curve and rotate around that wood knot. So that's uh, precisely what we're trying to create here. It looks pretty good so far. And so here, let's just move these nodes over, and then we'll continue to keep uh, moving forward here. So the next step is going to be uh, taking this new crack lines that we have that include uh, kind of the warping from the knots, and we're going to integrate that here into this blend that we have. So previously, we had just the lines, is what you see here in our 3D view. So let's now take our new uh, kind of distorted line, crack lines and place those here into the blend. And so here in the 3D view, we can start to see where these wood knots are going to start showing up. And so here we can see them, and that's, uh, that's work, like I said, that's working for me pretty well. I uh, like this shape here. Uh, this is uh, getting, getting me closer and closer with each one of these uh, kind of stages that we're adding here to the details. All right, so now at this point, this particular directional warp, we don't need it anymore. So we're just going to delete that guy, get rid of him. And um, OK, so the next thing that I want to do 
is perhaps add a little bit more kind of depth. It's a pretty flat kind of piece here. So uh, let's do this. Let's add a blend node. And I'm going to add another levels because I'm going to end up uh, kind of doing the same process where, I, where I'm going to uh, kind of uh, change or, or redistribute some of these values here within um, these knot shapes. So let's place uh, this connection line here to our levels because we're going to end up using this here. And then uh, we're going to place uh, the result of this levels here into the foreground. And uh, then let's come over here to this blend and take the output of this blend and put that into the background of this new blend. So now that we have this in place, let's uh, let's do a multiply, or actually, I'm sorry, let's do a subtract. So now we're starting to get kind of like a, a dark area here, uh, which is going to kind of like, as you'll see, kind of push in uh, here to the knots uh, within this height map. So here we'll grab this levels, and now, of course, I'm going to make some uh, just adjustments here to this. So let's just uh, kind of change what we have here with our gamma. So we'll do something like that. The idea here is that you can see that uh, we've got this kind of dark area and then a slight little gradation. So we're going to get like a, maybe a, a slight little kind of dip downwards into each one of these knots is kind of what I'm looking to do here. So uh, here I'm just changing that input black just to kind of lessen that effect a bit. So let's try something like this for now. Um, so here's what we have. Let's plug the output of this into our normal so we can visualize it here in our 3D view. And so now you can see that, it, like I said, it just kind of uh, gives the effect of this kind of dip down into this knot area. So here's a uh, little, gives it just a little bit more kind of a 3D uh, feel to these wood knots. Okay, so that's working for me so far. Let's take these nodes and just kind of move them kind of a little bit more out of the way just to kind of make things nice and clean. Uh, and readable. Always got to make sure our graphs are, are pretty readable here. And this node, uh, I'm going to keep this towards the bottom. Uh, this is where I'm trying to work to build up my overall kind of height image. All right, so now what we want to do uh, that we've kind of uh, added this kind of placeholder here for where these knots are going to go and uh, we've kind of warped our wood grain around them, uh, we want to start to actually integrate in our wood, our knot pattern itself. So here's our knot pattern. Now, of course, with this, we're going to want to offset it to match the offset that we've been doing here with this directional warp. So I'm going to take this warp, copy and paste it, because uh, we're going to make sure that we uh, reuse this same settings that we have here. And here for the input, instead of it being the mass, this time we want to replace it with the knots. So now you can see that our knots are now off, uh, offset here. OK, so let's kind of start to move this node up over out of the way. And again, might need to just kind of start to um, adjust some of these uh, pins here or these points. So we'll move this guy back. And again, here we have this uh, directional warp. All right, so now we have our wood pattern and we want to integrate that here back to uh, what we have so far with this blend node. So this is the composited result of all the wood planks and we need to add the actual knot shape. So to do this, we're gonna add another blend here. So let's take uh, the directional warp into the foreground and the result of this blend here into the background. Now, uh, to actually merge these two guys together, uh, instead of using a blending mode, I'm actually just going to use a mask and plug it here into the opacity. So I need to make sure that um, I uh, use my mask. So I want to use this mask, but I want to make sure that it's offset. So I'm going to pull um, the, the output from this directional warp. Uh, however, I also am probably going to need to adjust uh, kind of the values here. So I'm going to need to also uh, kind of um, process this through a levels. So let's add a levels. Let's take the output of the directional warp and plug that into the levels. So now I know that it's going to line up correctly. So here's our mask. Here's our knots. And as you can see, uh, they line up correctly. So we need that to um, we need to make sure that's the case. So let's take the output of the levels and plug that into the opacity. And now let's view our blend here. So uh, on top of this, we can see now we start to get uh, the uh, result or that, that pattern from the wood knots. So now we'll go back to the levels and start to just play around with the values here that we're getting. So we'll do something like this maybe, increase this. Uh, again, just kind of playing around a bit with the histogram. Maybe I'll zoom in just to see what we have. All right, uh, perhaps something like this is going to work. Okay, so now we have the entire result. 
So let's plug this here into our normal and see what we get. So here in the 3D view, we start to see that uh, now we've got some nice pattern here uh, or some nice detail for these wood knots uh, and they're curving around kind of the wood and they're causing the wood to kind of curve around like you see here. Um, okay, great. Now, one other thing that I want to do, though, is I want to make sure that the uh, kind of height value level of these knots is going to match what I have placed inside of the wood itself. So, for example, or what I mean by that, you'll notice that on this particular plank in this kind of dark area, we have this wood knot, but it's, you know, real bright. So it's like a lot higher than it should be. So what we want to do is probably come back here to our original warp. Okay, so that's where we started to define, um, well, basically what we have here is our, uh, our plank. And like I said, they have this kind of horizontal gray value here to basically kind of um, uh, slope uh, these planks kind of in different directions. And then I kind of warped it so it's, it has a little bit of an effect. So I want to take this kind of the, this gray value here and I want to multiply that. Uh, against what I have here for my knots, just to make sure that everything uh, gets integrated properly in terms of kind of height levels. So what we're going to do is uh, add a blend. Here's this blend node, and while I'm all the way over here, I'm just going to grab the result of this warp and plug it into the foreground. And now let's take this blend and just place it over into kind of this area where we're going to do this uh, composite operation. Let's take our directional warp and place that into the background, and now we'll set our blending mode here to multiply. So now when we do that, you can see the result here. So it'll pass, this is where all the knots were on the same kind of height level, and now since we've multiplied it based on kind of this uh, luminance range that we have, uh, if we look at this and I start to just you know increase the opacity, now we've got a nice variation in height level for each of these wood knots, and it perfectly matches kind of the luminance range uh, for the different height values in these planks. And that's precisely what we want to do. So now let's take the output of this blend and use that as the foreground here. So we'll do that. And now you can see the result if we've got some variance here in the depth of these uh, wood knots. So this here is going to end up being kind of like almost our, our well, it's going to end up being our finalized height. And so now what I want to do is probably go back to maybe this levels and just again start to kind of play with this. So uh, let, let me just kind of increase the size of this maybe. I'm just gonna start making some adjustments here. All right, let's zoom in kind of close. I can really see what I'm doing. So maybe something more like that. Uh, here we have this other levels, uh, again, where I was adding kind of this kind of dark area. I want to make a, maybe a little adjustment to that too. So let's select this guy and just play around with that. So wait, that's way too much. Zoom here in my 3D view so I can really see what this is doing as well. Okay, and then again, just one more adjustment here to this levels. Just seeing what this is doing. All right, I think, okay, I think that'll work for me. All right, so here at this stage, we start to kind of get uh, kind of this uh, final integration here of these wood knots. It's looking pretty cool, uh, especially I like how this one's working. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's working pretty well for me. Uh, so here I'm, I'm just kind of going back and just making a few tweaks here and there to uh, some of these uh, different blend opacities. So this one here is going to just increase, uh, you know, kind of the overall kind of uh, strength or depth value for these crack lines. So I might just uh, decrease that maybe a little bit here. And uh, let me come up to where we actually have this wood grain is coming into play. Let's see, where is that? Okay, so it looks like I uh, accidentally deleted uh, where I was using my wood uh, pattern here. So uh, we need to uh, integrate this guy back into the mix. So uh, let's see, let's do this. Uh, we can probably try to place it in uh, right around into here. So we're going to need a blend. So we're going to add a blend. And here I'm going to add, uh, let's do, 
Let's grab this directional warp that we have. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's grab this directional warp, copy and paste it, because I'm going to use this guy. And uh, here, instead of the cracks, we're going to place in the input. So that's just going to, um, oops, I'm sorry, that's the actual warp node. I want the directional warp. Uh, here it is. So let's grab this directional warp. And so we're going to copy this guy and paste it. All right, so that's what we really want to do. And let's grab the pattern here. And uh, we're going to use that as the input. So now you can see our wood pattern here is broken up. Uh, again, if I just kind of uh, change this intensity, we can see how this is just offset. And so we're going to want to do this. All right, so we have this, this guy offset. And like I said, we have a blend over here. So um, what we're going to do is take the output here of um, this directional warp. We'll place it into the foreground. And then let's take the result here of this blend where we already have our cracks. And let's place this into the background. So we'll double click. And we're going to set this to multiply. And then we'll start to just kind of uh, decrease uh, this value here, uh, or our opacity setting. So now we're integrating this wood grain back. Uh, however, what I'd like to do is kind of remove uh, some of the grain here from this area where I'm going to have uh, the actual wood knot itself. So uh, to do that, uh, what we're going to want to do is uh, use another blend. So quickly, I'll create another blend here. Uh, let's move this point over a little bit. And uh, let's see. We're just going to use the same kind of technique we did here where we removed that section from the uh the, the line. So you can see I just used this simple levels control uh, here, or excuse me, levels node. So let's borrow that guy into the foreground. Uh, graph's getting a little messy here, so um, I'll try to slow down a little bit in how I'm explaining this. So uh, like I said, we have already kind of created this, this technique where we use this levels control. Uh, now the levels, again, coming from this directional warp. We ran a levels to kind of adjust that value so that uh, when we just multiplied that, I'm sorry, we added that here in this case uh, to those crack lines, we just kind of removed that kind of swirling distorted area. And like I said, we're trying to kind of redo that same effect here, except this time we're going to do that here to this wood pattern. So here I'm going to take the output and place that into the background. Now instead of add, this time uh, we're just going to do a multiply. Whoops, I'm sorry, a subtract. All right, so that'll kind of clean that out. And uh, then we're going to take, this is the result. So it's our wood pattern that's been offset. And uh, we've subtracted kind of the area where these wood knots are going to go. And so now we're going to use that as the output here into this blend. So this is the result that we get. It's just kind of a gray area in, in place here. So uh, here you can see that previously what we had was this, which was just our crack lines. Now we have our crack lines with the wood pattern. Uh, and we also have uh, kind of subtracted that wood pattern from where the knots are going to go. So we're going to use this as our background input for our blend. And so now when I do that, uh, we just start to get a little bit more kind of uh, wood grain detail here into our, our wood paneling. Uh, excuse me, our wood planks. So we can then also go back here and we can adjust the opacity. So you can see that more opacity I add in, it's, it's, it's really cutting into it a, a bit too much. So I don't want to do that. So uh, like I said, this is more of kind of a subtle, more subtle effect. So let's try this around close to 0.4. And we'll see what this does for us. Uh, again, just kind of move my light around. Actually, I think it might be a little better if I come over to my base material. I have my color. I'll switch this to HSV. And then let's just lower that value. Make this just a little bit darker here. See if that's, that helps. Um, okay, so yeah, this is looking pretty decent here with our wood knots have now been integrated in to uh, the height map. So uh, let's just grab these nodes, kind of move them over. Uh, this here is going to become our, our height map uh, that we're using to uh, create our normal. And like I said before, we're going to readdress that because um, some of that detail we, we, we're kind of taking out of the actual height map that's being plugged into the shader. This here is the height map that I'm using to generate my map, such as my normal, and as you'll see uh, later, my ambient occlusion and so on. Uh, here, this is the actual normal that I'm feeding to the shader in case I want to use, let's say, a parallax occlusion or tessellation. So uh, again, you can, as I mentioned in an early video, we, we, we kind of um, separate the two. All right, so um, this is going to take care of everything that we have. So let's grab these nodes and just kind of move them up. Again, a little organization here. Okay, so let's select these nodes that we have, and we're going to frame them. 
And so in this frame here, this is going to be uh, the knots. And uh, here's our grayscale. We're still working with that. And then here, like I said, we've just kind of used some of these pins to help kind of uh, redistribute uh, what we were doing, uh, our connection line, just so we could keep things a little bit more readable. All right, so let's just move this one down like this so we can see it. Uh, so it's connecting into here. And then uh, we're also using this guy here, and it's connecting over into uh, this directional warp. So yeah, always helps with the readability in this case. Okay, great. So with this video, we are actually going to close out the entire grayscale section. So here you can see that we started with our basic shapes. We did large medium shapes, small details, and now we have our knots. Actually, I spoke too soon. Uh, we need to make one more video before we close out uh, the, the creation of this uh, height map because, you know, we have forgotten to add uh, the nail Kind of the nail holes in the nail. So we're going to uh, finally complete this height map in the next video.